Hello everyone, it's been nearly two years and we now have the capability of running 100 plus emulators on a mini classics, but unfortunately there's still a sad but true fact that we have roughly a half thousand chords remaining that do not fare too well on the minis and uh, have a less than admirable frame per second. And of course, there's a possibility that some of these may be fixed in the future with code and ingenuity and uh, code additions such as dynamic recompiler as an example, but some may never be fixed due to the absolute requirement for CPU and GPU intensiveness. But right now I loaded Radiant Silver Gun for the Yaboo's Core, a great Sega Saturn game. It's a shmup made by Treasure who also made Alien Soldier, Gunstar Heroes, Guardian Heroes, Ikaruga, and of course, Sin and Punishment. I'm going into controls because uh, for the Yaboo's Core, you have to have user one device type set to Saturn Pad. And this is one of the cores that would certainly benefit from having the uh, true implementation and hookup of the Dynamic Recompiler. And as an example... Dynamic Recompiler is already in the Recast, which runs Dreamcast games, and in PCSX Rearmed, which runs PlayStation 1 games, and it benefits both cores considerably. But uh, you'll see right here, the game runs at a roughly 7 to 11 frames per second. This is uh, an absolute joke and nothing to be taken seriously. It is a gimmick, and we definitely need our Dynamic Recompiler for the second Saturn core. Now, we have a newer core called Chronos, which still needs to be made compatible for the minis, but... Hopefully we'll be able to get it there. But there are roughly a half dozen cores all together that simply do not perform admirably on the minis. And uh, some of the other ones are, of course, uh, Virtual Jaguar, BSNES, the Nintendo DS, of course, uh, PCFX, Virtual Jaguar, and Messin. And I'm going to do another example right now. I'm going to go to the dummy floater method, low core, I'll load one of the Nintendo cores. I uh, will load Desmoom 2015. Low content, Star directory dummy. And we'll load a random DS game. Uh, we'll try Tetris. This is one of the few that actually runs decently on the mini, but in general, you need about six to eight times the processing power to have full frame per second on the mini for Nintendo DS games. Whether or not you have dynamic recompiler applicable to the core or such. But uh, let's check this out for a moment here. Again, definitely not full speed, but as good as it can really be tweaked to as far as uh, running on the mini in consideration and such. See, it's okay, but not great. Now I'm going to go back to the main user interface, and we're going to think about things from a different perspective here. What if we were in an alternate timeline, a multiverse, an alternate universe, so to speak? Uh, take this all with a grain of salt, and just imagine yourself in Back to the Future 2 alternate timeline, and or multiverse with Family Guy, and uh, for all intents and purposes aside, we are able to run Nintendo DS games at a full frame per second with absolute amazing pristine optimization or such. And uh, this is probably what it would be quite like if we were able to pull this off. I'm going to load uh, Contra 4. Right now I'm loading one of the very best Contra games in the lineage of the Legacy. I mean the two weakest links being Legacy of War and Sea Contra Adventure. This game is made by Way4 Technologies, fantastic company that has proven time and time again they can take licenses for uh, superheroes and of course Disney and make absolute gems. I mean absolute magic out of these games whereas many other companies have failed miserably and turned them into absolute turds. But let's check out one of the very, very best uh, Nintendo DS games you could ever conceivably play on any console and or handheld system. And uh, let's see how far we could get without the cat bumping the keyboard or controller, so to speak. And I love the dual use of the screens here. I mean, impeccable job here from the sound effects, music, overall design. And I like it. It's like Contra 3 Alien Wars where you can actually push the L trigger and uh, put your weapon in reserve so you don't lose it prematurely. It is also a very, very incredibly difficult game. I'm probably going to get my butt kicked. It's a given at this point. And two of the most recent entries that uh, WayForward has made uh, that I love are both DuckTales Remastered and, of course, uh, Double Dragon Neon. And some of Double Dragon Neon soundtrack made it into um, the Double Dragon custom OST for the arcade cores. And there we go. Can't bump the controller. Uh, again, there we go. I can do this. Yes, I definitely need a spread gun. <laughs> How many of you remember playing the original Contra without the 30-man code? It was quite difficult, wasn't it? I could actually play the entire game without the 30-man code, but it definitely took considerable practice initially. I'm going to hold on to my spread gun. I don't want to lose it prematurely here. 
And I love the grappling hook. Very, very cool uh, addition here. If I was actually going to talk about my favorite Contra games, I love Contra uh, Shattered Soldier, and I love Hardcore for the Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive. Both impeccable productions as well. But Way Forward did a considerable, amazing job with this game, and I'm very, very pleased. We most certainly need to have this on our mini in the very, very near future. Okay, can't bump the keyboard again. I have two sprout guns, I can do this. I need to make it to at least the first boss. And there's a little bit of a, a throwback to Contra uh, Super C, should I say. That was a great game as well, on the Nintendo and in the arcade. And of course, because of the Iran uh, Contra affair, back in the Reagan era, they had to call it Super C rather than Super Contra. But I got two spread guns and I have faith that I'll at least uh, have a chance to get into the boss. I'm really hopeful here. Very, very cool game. Way forward, you've, you've impressed me here. And I love uh, quite a few games they made. They've even made a Barbie game that is a Metroidvania style game, which is great for younger uh, players. But I'll showcase at least one or two other uh, way forward games in this video. Okay, it starts out like your typical Contra 1 boss battle. Let's see what happens here. And I'm glad I actually made it to the end with my spread gun. I definitely need my spread gun. Yay! Or is it yay? Oh no. Why? One spread gun down, oh great. Can't win here. <laughs> I need to take out these guys on the top level there. And I'm gonna get my butt kicked here. Oh well. We're gonna move on to some more games here. It is only natural that our next game be a Castlevania game. Uh, also a Konami property and we're gonna play Order of Ecclesia. Great, great Metroidvania game, and I'm a big fan of the subgenre. Two of the most recent entries in this subgenre would be, obviously be uh, Shadow Complex and Axiom Verge. Two games I love very much, and I'm going to definitely showcase these in a future Horror Strive Against the video. But for right now, we're going to be playing Order of Ecclesia. In a little tidbit here, I've actually played through all the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS Castlevania games all at work on my breaks and lunches. Same with Final Fantasy 1 through 9. But uh, let's check this out right now. Impeccable production, one of the very best Castlevania games without a doubt. And the soundtracks are amazing. I'm gonna do a new game here. Even the Tiger handheld electronic uh, games uh, for Castlevania, I'm still a fan of those. Okay, let's get this show on the road with some pure, amazing metroidvania -ness. And uh, I'm not too big on the story right now. If I want to play story, I'll get into some Fantasy Star and or, of course, Final Fantasy. For right now, I'm just going to get to the nitty gritty and get right to the solid gameplay. Need some fast forward activate here. And Shinoa is a really cool character that made it into Harmony of Despair for PlayStation 3 and, of course, Xbox 360.
And I love the sub uh, map system that the game has. I mean, it would have been a perfect welcome addition to the earlier Metroid game. I mean, but a hack has been made that has a map for Metroid. This is also playable in HD on the MES and uh, PC core. I wouldn't even try to run it on the MES and uh, NES Classic core for right now because it runs far too slow at 7 to 11 frames per second, like some of the other cores that I mentioned. I guess I'm going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial right now. The glyph system is very, very cool, and she uses this in uh, Harmony of Despair as well. We gotta take out a few enemies before we move on to a few more games here. Soap opera drama. And how many of you are actually watching that Castlevania Season 2 on Netflix right now? I started watching it. Very, very cool. And I'm most certainly looking forward to the next uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch uh, Castlevania game. That should be coming out sometime in 2019. The Rapier Glyph. And there are fantastic scores for each and every Castlevania game that I played. Very, very cool. Okay, I have to actually do a little bit of a tutorial here and attack him with my rapier glyph. Alternate combo. Okay, I want some Metroidvania awesomeness right now. Let's move on. Full screen mode activate. There's my basic trainer. Let's get to the awesomeness here. Okay, give me some action now. And uh, the original Metroid I actually played by using the map that was in the Nintendo Player's Guide that came with the original Nintendo system in 1985. Crouch down to check for treasures in the earth. <laughs> Okay, I do have the map there, which is always welcome to see where I've been and where I need to go. Save point, cool. Oh, I wonder which way I should go. Maybe I'll follow the arrows. That ain't creepy or anything. And I'm wondering what game I should test next. I'll figure something out before I take out a few more enemies. Oh, this would be so perfect for the horse drive against it with the spoon and blood.
And we know what happens when we have respawning enemies, that'd be considered farming potential. Okay, let's see where we have to go. On the map, it looks like I can go left. Definitely digging this game. It's fun to play again, even though I've been through it before. A magnet. Create an attractive magnetic field. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. I remember that. Very, very cool. But in any case, I'm going to move on to the next game here. Let's try a few more out. Uh, we're going to have to try out uh, maybe New Super Mario Brothers. Very, very cool game. That'll be our next one we try out. Very, very cool game. I love the ones on 3DS as well as uh, Nintendo Wii as well. Princess is in another castle, right? I remember the very first time I played this and it had such a cool thing to it. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute here. I do like uh, Super Mario Maker as well. Very, very cool. And it's actually uh, one of the games along with NES Remix that I wanted to play on uh, the Wii U, but I'm so glad they actually ported them to the 3DS. Otherwise, I would have had to get a Wii U. Thank you, Nintendo. Remember this? <laughs> very, very cool. Remember the first time I've seen that, the first time I played it, just blown away. Okay, oh, we'll do a little bit of the second stage and then we'll move on to uh, a couple more test games. Maybe a few. I'm expecting an underground stage if I remember correctly. I love that it actually has elements from future Mario games like the butt stomp. Very, very cool. So it's got the Gensei Quav like a Mario one, and I'm hoping there, I'm trying to remember correctly if there were anything like a Mario 2 elements in it, but for sure there are Mario 1, 2, and 3, and of course... Oh, 
Okay, it's time to move on to another game. If I had a symbiotic relationship with Venom, he'd probably about right now go, Metroidvania. I mean, Tony Todd did a fantastic job with the voice work in the latest movie, and if you don't know who he is, he also played Candyman, and he made appearances in many great horror movies, such as the Final Destination series, which I'm a big, big fan of, as well as Wishmaster and Hatchet. Hatchet is also another fantastic horror movie series. And uh, I have a perfect game for Tony Todd, a.k.a. Venom, to play. A good Metroidvania game that he would definitely agree with. Uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. And Spider-Man, like Batman, has had great fortune as far as uh, good, good uh, licensed games. I mean, mainly the LGN uh, logo. When you see that on the Spider-Man game, you know you're in trouble. But generally, the Activision logo ends up being a damn good game. But let's get the show on the road here and play a little bit of Metroidvania. And there we go, uh, Stan Lee. He has to be in each and every Marvel movie, but now the games too. Very, very cool. Love the guy. He was great in Mall Rats. Great Kevin Smith movie, by the way. And the, the very, very cool thing about the Nintendo DS is when you play a Metroidvania game, you have the map system on the other screen, which works out incredibly well. That is amazing. I mean, one of my favorite features of the DS right there. This also helps out with the Ocarina of Time on the 3DS, as well as Majora's Mask. I'm going to go full screen activate for right now. Yes, I've got way out of my way to play each and every Metroid video game you could possibly imagine. I'll definitely showcase some more of these in my Horse Traffic Against the videos, such as Axiom Verge and, of course, Shadow Complex. And I have a few more up my sleeve that many of you might not even have been aware of. And I also love these type of games like Splinter Cell, Assassin's Creed, and so on, where they have this nifty combat, which is right out of the school book of, of course, games like Devil May Cry and even God of War. Very, very well done game here, though. Very impressed. And there are a good half dozen Spider-Man games, of which I played each and every one, on the Nintendo DS. A little bit of vanity there, uh, <laughs> Mysterio. Come on now. I'm right here, swinging around. Let's do this. I'm ready to do some Devil May Cry tactics. There we go. Amazing. Love this stuff. This is just the first move that you unlock in the game. There are quite a few more. A nice arsenal of moves that you get throughout the course of the game. I won't let you take it. I'm not asking your permission. Just a quick yank and no. I will play this for another minute, then we'll move on to some more Metroidvania awesomeness. Well, how about some other games, should I say? Quite an immersive game, really cool. Okay, where do I go from here? Let's see. I'll look at the map and see where I haven't been yet. Always nice. Okay, right there. Conveyor belt? Video game all of a sudden? That self referential humor there, always cool. A little bit of Deadpool style humor there. Okay, on that cue, before we go into this vortex into another realm, the noir realm, which is basically like a black and white style level, we're going to move on to another uh, game. 
Sega do what, Nintendo? But what happens if a uh, Sega game that Nintendo is on the Nintendo system? Well, let's see what happens now. We'll try out, uh, how about, uh, Sonic Colors? Now, I'm a big fan of each and every Sonic game I've played, except for Sonic Unleashed. That is probably the one game in the entire lineage of games that is just god-awful, but... Nearly every other one that I played I like, even the ones that are on the Wii. I mean, even the earliest ones on the Wii. None of these are nearly as bad as Sonic Unleashed. And, uh, of course my favorite of all of them is Sonic Generations on PlayStation 3. I love that game. It has a great combination of 3D and 2D levels from the various Sonic games, like 10 games all together. But, Sega do what Nintendo put on the Nintendo system. Why does it sound like music from Space Channel 5? That's kind of funny. Reminds me of exactly playing Space Channel 5 on Dreamcast. Very, very fast pace. How many of you remember the very first time you've ever played Sonic 1 on the original Sonic Genesis, aka Mega Drive? I mean, I've been through all of those. And Sonic 3 actually uh, was supposed to have a soundtrack. Uh, with the help of Michael Jackson, which never panned out truly, I mean, to the end, but, uh, I'd say my favorite out of all of the ones on Sega Genesis would most certainly be Sonic and Knuckles. That game i played so many times, it is such a fantastic game. I'm definitely digging the speed, very, very cool. Now yeah, we don't need that. Well, that was kind of cool how that little uh, water effect there. Definitely digging this game. Very, very cool. Love this. The hang glider's a nice touch. Oh, very, very cool. Doing a 3D effect there. Love it. Oh. Can't bump the controller, I swear. Okay, now we're gonna move on to another game. I kind of feel like a little pinball right now. I mean, I'm a big fan of all the Metroid games and even the offshoot games such as Metroid Pinball. Very, very cool game. Metroid Prime Pinball, here we go. And I'm still waiting on the next Metroid Prime to come out, which probably won't come out until 2019 sometime. That classic music which never gets old. The beauty about uh, pinball tables in general is that you can pick them up and play them in an instant, but it can take you a lifetime to master them. There's all kinds of really, really cool uh, scoring opportunities. I mean, I have all the uh, pinball arcade collections for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Very, very cool stuff. And having the ACDC one is just the icing on the cake. Very, very well done game, and uh, some of my earlier pinball games that I used to love are Alien Crush, which happened to be on TurboGrafx-16, very, very cool game, and of course Devil Crush. Oh, 
Oh, jeez. When I used to play uh, pinball on Atari many years ago, I used to tilt the hell out of the game. Tilting is so funny. I'd say uh, one of my favorite games that, uh, pinball wise nowadays is actually the Indiana Jones ones, which has uh, Indiana Jones 1 through 4 movie wise. Very, very cool pinball table. And uh, it cannot be emulated yet because there's a certain number of years, just like with the main emulators, before they actually bother emulating it. I've played in the arcade locally. Still a very, very fun game. Dr. Jones. Oh, jeez. Failing again. How you do better? It's the kid keeps bumping the keyboard, the controller, so to speak. We got plenty more games to test out, though. Oh, I love doing this stuff. The Harley Davidson game with multi uh, pinballs is really cool. <laughs> Over a half dozen pinballs on the table at once. Very, very cool. Definitely a great game to have a little bit of a score in competition with your friend, relative, loved one, and such. A very, very cool game. We're going to move on to some more games now. For those of you who are masochists and love that uh, tried and true trial by fire, um, there are games that are similar to Super Meat Boy, such as N+. Great, great game, without a doubt. Let's check this out for a moment. Now, I love games like Trials HD and, uh, of course, this other game, which I'm going to show you probably in the next couple minutes, called Trackmania, which came out before Trials HD. And it is a precision game. I mean, I love games that require absolute precision. I mean, even as far back as Nintendo 64, I used to actually play games such as Blast Cores, uh, Blast Core made by Rare, of course, Pilot Wings and so on, and absolutely platinum the games. A very, very cool game, and uh, it starts out simple enough, but becomes progressively insane later on. Very, very cool. Starts out very, very simple, but just like Super Meat Boy, insane. Yes, I played all the Trials games, from Trials HD to the latest one on PlayStation 4. Fantastic game as well. Trials Fusion. There's a trap there. Let's see what we have here. Very engaging game and definitely very cool. Gotta get used to this again. Can't bump in the keyboard here. Kinda reminds me of trying to play Portal. Remember how insane Portal was? A very, very cool game, and I definitely want Portal 3 to happen, because I'd have to say Portal 2 is probably the best experience I've had on PlayStation 3 uh, in the last decade, without a doubt. But we're going to move on to some more games, but yes, N Plus is fantastic here. Oh, here we go. Here's some challenge. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the traps. Very, very cool. See, even the third level one, it gets insane. But let's move on to some more games. And of course, I can't go through this uh, lineup of games without playing a little bit of Metal Slug 7. One can never have enough Metal Slug in their life. Oh, 
Uh, let's try hard mode for true Metal Slug fans and hardcore action gamers. I know I'm not going to make it far because I know the cat's going to bump the controller. Yeah, definitely insane right now. Need that two-player mode activate without a doubt. Just absolute insanity on screen. Love it. I'm doing a uh, pretty decent for it being on hard mode. Usually I go through quite a few continues in these games. Okay. And there's actually blood in this game. Remember when Nintendo didn't even want blood in Mortal Kombat? Well, we have blood in Metal Slug 7. Yes. This would fit right in with the Horse Jam and videos. That's actually kind of a surprise seeing the blood there. I actually forgot all about this the first time I played it. I was just playing Zombie Revenge for Dreamcast, and uh, there was green blood in that game, which a few of you actually noticed. That's danger. Let's throw a few grenades at the danger and see what happens. I just want to see what happens when I blow up the barrel. <laughs> Gotta have a little fun here. Come on now. That's danger, but it's not doing anything. Come on now. I guess I'll just take the tank out with a few grenades. There we go. I was kind of hoping I could throw a grenade at it and take the tank out in one fell swoop, but apparently not. This game looks absolutely beautiful for the uh, DS. Very, very cool. And to think for the arcade versions, I actually had to do a dip switch to enable blood, yet the blood is here by default in the Nintendo DS version of Metal Slug 7. And we have a few more games to do throughout the rest of this video, of course. Let's uh, shed a little bit more blood here. Then we'll move on to the next game. I should be near the boss battle by now. Uh, apparently my game's over, so I'm gonna move on to the next game now. Since I'm actually touting uh, Way4 Technologies as a great company, I'm gonna play another game they've done that is a very, very cool superhero game that I had fun with. Uh, let's try out... Batman the Brave and the Bold, the video game. Also a very, very interesting cartoon series, without a doubt. Again, uh, WayForward has made uh, nearly 100 uh, games, and I'd say at least 85% of them are really, really fun games. I mean, the games that didn't do as well are the ones that were obviously under time constraints. They made a TMNT game on... Uh, PlayStation 3, or it could have been PlayStation 4, that actually was a rush job because they, they needed to have it done within a certain time constraint, but their Transformers game, which looks like the original cartoon, is an absolute impeccable game, and I'm definitely going to be showcasing that in the near future as well. But this is a very, very cool game, and I definitely had a lot of fun with this uh, several years back. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Adventures of Batman and Robin, a great, great game on uh, Super Nintendo. One of the very best. 
And of course, there's an Adventures of Batman and Robin on Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive, which is a completely different style game. It's more of a, a Contra style game. There we go, I was pushing the wrong button there. <laughs> very, very beautiful animation there. Bulletproof cape, go figure. played a Batman game where you could jump like you can in Ninja Gaiden, right? And the cool thing about this game is you actually don't play as just Batman. You play as a variety of superheroes, which it makes the game even cooler. Boss battle! I remember, how many of you remember the one episode of uh, uh, the Batman cartoon series where um, uh, a guy accidentally uh, cut off Joker in traffic so uh, Joker came and hung him down and made him pay him for it as far as the favor was concerned several years later. Very, very cool. I'd have to say the 1990s cartoon series such as uh, Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man were some of the very best cartoons I've ever seen. I've probably been through the Superman cartoon a good half dozen times, my favorite of the bunch, but I also love the animated Batman series and, of course, the Spider-Man series. I particularly liked when uh, Spider-Man was actually trying to save Kingpin and didn't realize he was a villain. Very, very cool stuff. And out of all these Batman movies, the best Batman movie is still Mask of Phantasm. I still need to watch the new one that takes place in uh, feudal Japan. Here we have a little bit of a hub uh, here where we can choose different levels. Got to find a level select area. Forgot where it was. Challenge mode. Very, very cool. You can actually buy power-ups. Okay, let's get back into Badmobile. I think that's where we choose our levels at. There we go, Gotham. Atlantis. Oh, let's try out Atlantis. Aquaman's Ape Adventure. And yes, even though the Justice League movie didn't do too well, I'll probably still see the Aquaman movie. And when the Justice League cartoon uh, came out many years ago, uh, in the late 90s, should I say early 2000s, they actually made Aquaman a badass, I mean, compared to the original 1970s uh, character. Yes, I'm actually playing as Aquaman. <laughs> Come on now. Way Ford can even make Aquaman a cool character. Oh, 
Oh, I can actually switch between the two. Oh, look at that craziness. I like when they had Gorilla Grodd in the uh, Flash uh, TV series, that was very, very cool. Very, very cool game, I'm gonna try a few more before the end of this video. Okay, now we're gonna try out that Trackmania game which I told you about that I'm a huge fan of. Particularly the PC version and now the PlayStation 4 version. And of course they released this on many, many platforms but it never did as well as it did in Europe on PC because of the online capability. Uh, Trackmania DS, great, great game. And I've dumped many, many hours into uh, the PC versions. All of them, uh, to try to platinum all the stages. Very, very cool. Nadio is a fantastic company. And it essentially is like uh, Trials HD and Trials Fusion where it is a puzzle based uh, racing game. You'll see what I mean in a moment here. See so if race, platform, puzzle, I mean the racing and platform stages are incredibly awesome. Now I'm going to start out uh, because I have no choice on the practice stages but by the time you get to the extreme ones they're absolutely insane. Very, very cool and absolute precision, just like Trials HD. One little mistake costs you the race. Try this one more time. Then we'll move on to the next stage. Not quite the target I need. I'll do an extra race. I can do better than this. Look at this coolness. Oh, didn't do too bad that time. Got gold that time. To do a couple more races. And it really gets cool when you get some airtime going in this game. Like even that, that is so awesome. Of course you can uh, do a little reset and start over again if you want to. I've done hundreds of restarts in my time playing these games. Do a couple more since I'm really digging this game.
kind of like a zen experience. Come on, airtime, here we go, look at that awesomeness. But yes, this is Trackmania DS, very, very cool game, and well worth your time. I'm a big fan of uh, nifty gimmick puzzle style games, and uh, Steel Princess is a perfect example of this. I mean, it is supposed to be kind of a spiritual successor to Landstalker, but it doesn't play quite like that, but it is still an incredible puzzle game, for sure. It has that anime influence from the get-go. <laughs> Almost reminds me of watching Sword Art Online. Very, very cool anime, too. Okay, let's try this out for a minute. That sounded like Felios. That music sounded exactly like the beginning of Felios. Is there something you're not telling me now? Love this music. Uh, you are basically thrown on these little uh, maps and you have to figure out how to traverse them. This one's pretty easy to start with. Get the sword, take out the enemy. Gotta get used to these controls here. There we go. Then pick up the key. Okay, let's try a couple more of these uh, maps. And it gets quite challenging when you get a few maps in, which I love. I mean, I love them type of games. But very, very impressed with this, and unfortunately, it is not a very well-known game. Not a bad game whatsoever. I can definitely see myself playing this out completely. I will do one or two more stages, but I'm definitely digging this one. This will be one of my uh, comeback two games. And what do we have here? Ah, a different kind of sword. Looks like we have color-coded swords for the uh, different color enemies here. Okay, we'll try one more stage, but yes, this, out of all the ones I've showcased so far, this is definitely one of the ones I'm going to be coming back to. Oh, that's cool. Looks like we might have a little bit of uh, elevation going on here. Maybe I want to go up and see what's up above. Very, very awesome.
if I definitely give this game a solid 9 out of 10, very, very impressed with this game, and uh, we'll move on to a few more games now. Maybe it's time to do a shmup? Why not? Uh, we'll try out Nano's Tray. Very, very cool game. I like Nano's Tray 1 and 2. I mean, I love all the shmups that were on the Nintendo DS, and there were not a whole lot of these. There's even a Star Fox style one, but uh, let's try this out real quick. Uh, let's try Expert, why not? Probably get my butt kicked though. I'm, at, I'm not expecting to last very long on Expert mode, but we'll see. Okay, yes, this is a little bit of bullet hell going on here. Oh, great. Crash right into the ship. And that great uh, shmup company Cave also made a shmup uh, game on the Nintendo DS, which I might load up too since I'm on the shmup kick right now. If I'm gonna be, uh, play a shmup, I'm definitely gonna be playing on the hardest difficulty, always. Gotta get used to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move on to another shmup real quick. The cave shmup that I was talking about is uh, right over here. It is called Ketsui Death Label Kazuna Jigoku Tachi. Cave at its finest. I mean, I love each and every cave game. Gubanj is probably my favorite that they made. But many of you like the Don Don Patchy games. Doom mode? And we'll try that normal. You can always tell when Cave's behind the game. It has all the trademarks of a typical Cave schmuck. Kinda curious what Doom Mode is like. I almost want to go exit and see what Doom Mode is like. But yeah, you start out right on the mini boss battle from the get-go here. You ain't taking me down. <laughs> Definitely not on the first enemy, no way. No way, no how. You can try your best, but you're going down. There's always a sound like experience when you play bullet hell shmups. Very, very cool, you're down. <laughs> very, very cool. I'm definitely going to be coming back to that, but uh, let's try some more games. Uh, speaking of Metroidvania games, right next to me is Henry Hatsworth in the Puzzle and Adventure. This is actually one of my personal favorite Metroidvania games, and uh does a little bit what Puzzle Street Fighter did, where it combines two different genres. It has a puzzle match 3x3 three three, complete with a Metroidvania-style game uh, attached to it. You'll see for yourself in a moment here. K 
Kind of reminds me uh, quite a bit of a monster uh, world game, but with a little bit of a Metroidvania style to it. Yeah, I love these fake languages and many, many games and movies. Great soundtrack, great, uh, great gameplay. Definitely one of my, I'd have to say this is my top 20 uh, DS games for sure. And the puzzle addition to it is actually kind of cool. One can never have enough uh, <laughs> Metroidvania. Yes, by putting on the hat, I now have the ability to attack enemies. How many of you have actually played this game before or even heard of it? I believe it gives me a little bit of a tutorial as far as the puzzle game is concerned, but then you get to the point where you're doing the Metroidvania stages and having a mixture of the puzzle stages intertwined with them. And here's the tutorial for the puzzle stages. I'm sure many of you have played these. This sounds like that Fat Boy Slim uh, song with Christopher Walken dancing around the, uh, and uh, moving around and dancing. Listen to this music. This could be this. This could be that. <laughs> Christopher Walken song. That is uncanny. It sounds just like the Fat Boy Slim song. But uh, definitely check this game out too. Great, great game out. We're only gonna do maybe one or two more games, then we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna get my update posted. I guess it wouldn't hurt to see how uh, Tetris fares here compared to how I played it earlier in the video. And I like this game because you can actually keep spinning the blocks in place endlessly until you decide where you want them to be. Whereas in the original arcade and Nintendo versions, once they touch base, you're done for. So I was actually able to beat the entire game here just by rotating them on the top. It was a very, very cool gimmick. Run, it's so much better than in my earlier uh, representation of this. Definitely infinitely better than uh, earlier in the video.
Tetris! Okay, this game runs phenomenal. And it is pretty obvious at this point that the final game of this video is going to be Mario Kart. I mean, I will be doing a part two. I hope you all enjoyed uh, part one. You guys and guys can leave comments as far as what you'd like to see me play in part two. But uh, I'm going to play this on the hardest difficulty and hopefully I'll be able to end this video on a good note with first place. I'm going to go right to 150cc. And uh, we'll play as Mario. And I have a feeling I might get second place at the best. I mean, it's not easy on 150cc. Not off to a great start there, but I have a feeling I'll at least get second place. Help if I actually use the D-pad. There's always that, uh, restart race, though. I just didn't get a good start there. Let's try this again. Second time's the charm. That's better. Come on, first place, I can do this. One of the greatest multiplayer racing games I've ever played, and I, I still have the stairwell for the Wii version. That works for me. Uh, come on, first place. I can do this. I think it's going to be a challenge, though. Ah, uh, there goes my first place. I got screwed. Can't bump the controller, I tell you. It was a novel attempt, though. Well, there's my second place that I thought I'd have, but in any case, uh... Well, guys and gals, let's get out of our alternate timeline multiverse universe and, uh, time paradox, as you will. The cake is not always a lie. In all seriousness, this is absolutely feasible to run on the Mini in the future, but there are a certain set of conditions that need to be taken into account as far as issues that may have solutions that may be indeterminate. I mean, it is what it is, but there's going to be quite a bit of work and patience and perseverance to get this running as truly amazingly well as it appears that I have run these in this video.